The June 9th City Council meeting will be conducted pursuant to the provisions of the Governor's Executive Order N-29-20. The City Council Chambers will be closed to the public. Pursuant to the Governor's Executive Order dated March 17, 2020, the City Council is authorized to hold public meetings via teleconferencing and make meetings accessible electronically, electronically to all public seeking to observe and address the legislative body. All Brown Act provisions are, that require the physical presence of the city council members are, or the public city council meetings are waived. Please review the documents. If you want any of those documents, you're for, just contact the city clerk. Okay, could we have a roll call of the council, please? Councilmember Bertone? Here. Ebner? Ebner? All right, here. Vienna? Here. Weber? Here. Vadar? Here. The record reflect all council members are in attendance. Okay, oral communications? Anything, John? No this is a study session to uh, review the proposed budget for 2020-2021. Uh, okay, Brad? Yes, good evening, Mayor, City Council members. Brad McKinney, Acting City Manager. Before I get started, I wanna address two updates to the PowerPoint slides that went out with the packet on Friday. Um, since the presentation was prepared, we received TOT from the hotels, which came in higher than anticipated for March and April. We also received higher than anticipated permit revenues. And as a result, our revenue projections have increased, resulting in higher reserve levels than what was shown in the budget for fiscal year 1920 and 2021. Uh, this will be illustrated later in later tonight's presentation on slides three and 16. As an overview for members of the public that are watching, staff began working on the budget in January. Staff presented a revenue update on May 12th and a preliminary budget at the May 20th study session. That included operations, maintenance, and projects department directors felt were in the best interest of the city and their departments, regardless of the declining revenues, projections, and overall effects of COVID-19. Staff then presented an emergency preliminary budget at the May 26th study session that included only critical operating and maintenance costs and projects staff feel are critical to the health of the city's infrastructure. Based on the discussions that took place at the study sessions, staff has incorporated additional expenditures to the emergency budget in order to meet the needs of the community. As discussed in prior meetings, one of the biggest challenges this year with the budget is the revenue projections. Almost all revenue sources have drastically reduced from, from the original total, which is what I mentioned earlier, of roughly 3.2 million in 1920 and 3 million in 2021, which with the higher anticipated revenue, revenues I mentioned a minute ago, uh, we, are now, we now have a projection of reductions of 3 million in 1920 and 2.8 in 2021. In addition, when developing the budget, there are many factors to consider. Unknown revenue assumptions due to COVID-19 pandemic, the fact that the city's revenues continue to be less than the operating and maintenance and capital needs, the staff, the, we are facing, the issue we're facing with staffing needs to operate departments efficiently, and the need to be financially responsible and maintain healthy general fund reserves. The proposed budget tonight addresses all these factors and maintains a healthy reserve that could sustain operations even in times of crisis. To meet the challenges presented in this budget and still maintain the quality of services programs the community expects, staff made many reductions to the budget throughout the preparation process. The following slides display expenses and project projects that were discussed to be budgeted in fiscal year 2021 but were removed prior to the preliminary budgets and throughout the study sessions to meet the challenges 
and demands in this unprecedented time. Overall, the presented budget has an overall reduction in items considered for the budget in the amount of 7.6, almost 7.7 .7 million. These reductions fall across all departments. The administrative and general services budget was reduced by 224,000. The majority of the expenses in administrative and general services are fixed costs associated with items such as insurance, contracts for the attorney and sheriffs, and leases for items such as printers and other equipment. Some of the larger reductions in this administration and general services included the $100,000 for the service order request and asset management software, $25,000 for a new website host, $15,000 in laser fish upgrades, $15,000 in Excel upgrades and customization, and reductions in training, supplies, and equipment. In the community development budget, uh, there was a reduction of $2.5 million. The main reduction was the decision to complete the general plan update in future years and focus on the housing element and downtown specific plan in this year's budget. There was also some reductions in training, supplies, and potential staff. The public works budget was reduced by roughly $3.7 million. The major reductions included postponing the Lone Hill Street project, lighting projects, residential streets and pavement preservation programs, and postponing goal line betterments to future years. The department also reduced project management services, GIS development, training, street sign maintenance, and reduce the downtown sidewalk maintenance budget due to the work being done in-house. The parks and rec budget was reduced by roughly $1.2 million. The major reductions included a revised service model at the rec center to only provide aquatics programs to the community and the school district. This will be discussed separately later tonight, but a placeholder is put in this budget for this service model which includes aquatics programs for can, can I ask you a question? Yes. When you say is reduced, you mean it's reduced from this year's budget or from the proposed budget? The reduction is it's not a full, the, the rec center would not be fully operational given the racquetball courts, the other programming that goes on inside the rec center. Uh -huh. this, this budget only includes pool operations. So operations for the school district to utilize the pool for their, their aquatics programs, water polo, swimming, and also for the community to um, utilize city aquatics programs. The internal operations, the programming inside the rec center would, is not included in this budget. Okay, thank you. And that's a completely separate item that our director, Hector Kisterman, will be talking about later on. But I wanted to have a placeholder in this budget for that, that service model. There were also reductions in projects such as Via Verde Playground Structure, Lone Hill Park, Civic Center stage canopy and lighting and equipment. Parks and Rec also reduced the maintenance and operation budget, as well as re-evaluated -evalu staff for efficiencies and effectiveness at a reduced overall cost, which is included in this presented budget. The presented budget includes the items, also includes the items discussed in the emergency budget presented at the last study session, which includes critical capital improvement projects, and essential staffing needed to maintain a high level of service, provide programs to the community, and manage the capital projects included in this proposed budget. The proposed budget tonight also includes the items discussed by council at the last studied session. Based on council's discussion at the last study session, the presented budget includes continuous improvement training at 25,000, net network security upgrades at 25,000, um, an increase to our downtown sidewalk maintenance. However, most majority of it's gonna be done in-house, but we've increased it by 5,000. An additional 50,000 to the urban forest for a total of 150,000. Equipment, the Toro Dingo uh, was included at 25,000. Additional um, capital improvements in order to have that rec center operational for aquatics programs for the school district and community is included in there and the cost to continue the pool operations for a total of 
567,000. The presented budget also includes the following public works capital improvement projects. The Via Verde Street project, 2.7 million. Covina Boulevard, 2.5 million. Lighting projects, 510,000. Pavement preservation, 444,000. The Bedillo project at 2. Point, almost 2.3 million. Gold Line Yard relocation with 150,000. Gold Line Park and Ride construction, 250,000. And Catch Basin Grate and Filters at 850 for a total of 9.8 million in capital improvement projects. The budget also includes the following parks and rec capital improvement projects. Trail fencing and surface improvements at 100,000. Urban forest, um, the urban forest uh, reforestation at 150,000. Foothill Boulevard median landscape improvements at 400,000. Sportsplex improvements at 150,000. Horse Thief Canyon Park trails and dog park at 150,000. Recreation center improvements 337,000, which is for aquatics only. Senior center improvements, 50,000. Pioneer Park court resurfacing and security lighting, 40,000. Community service building audio and visual system, 50,000. Civic center buildings, HVAC alarm and lighting control system, 100,000. Civic center park tables and benches, 10,000. Loma Vista playground equipment structures, structure, 160,000 and Loma Vista Park basketball court resurfacing of 50,000 for a total of 1.7 million in, in parks and rec capital improvement projects. The budget also includes the following equipment. Um, emergency computer equipment and server for, for emergencies when those go down at 12.7, or sorry, 12,700. Replacement of telephone, cell phones and equipment, um, which is also an emergency contingency fund at 8,200. Code compliance leased vehicles at 11,600. The Toro Dingo, uh, which is 60,000, and the walk behind aerator, aerator at 40,000 for a total of 132,000. The presented budget includes the following current vacancies and new positions which all department heads feel are essential to maintaining the high level of service, provide programs to the community, and manage the projects in the budget. These are all the positions that, that we discussed before. Given all the challenges surrounding the current budget, the budget presented to you tonight has many reductions, includes the projects that, that council identified as important, critical CIP projects, essential staffing, and maintains a healthy general fund reserve of 66%. Um, this concludes um, staff's presentation and uh, we're open to any questions and staff would like to get input from council on the proposed budget and receive direction on any necessary adjustments before uh, hopefully submitting a finalized budget at the June 23rd council meeting. So I open it up to, to any questions from council. Questions? I have a question when... Uh... All right, just a minute, John. Dennis, you have any questions? Oh, you want me to go first? Um, Brad said that uh, trans occupancy, transit occupancy tax was, um, came in higher than we thought it would be. And I didn't hear what was the difference or what was the increase in what we thought it was going to be to where, what we think it will be. The difference from fiscal year 1920 was roughly $215,000. And the increase in fiscal year 2021 was roughly $175,000 for a difference, a total of $390,000. And, and that's in TOT. But I thought, uh, but I thought you said that um, we had an amount in mind and then our, rep our latest reports showed that we actually are getting more. Is that what you said or did I misunderstood? That, that transit occupancy tax was coming in higher than we expected and therefore we could either use less reserves or do some other projects. Correct. That is, is what I said. What I mentioned in the earlier part of the presentation was our 
Revenue sources were originally going to be reduced by 3.2 million in fiscal year 1920 and 3 million in fiscal year 2021. However, with the change and the increase in, in revenues in those projections, our overall reduction in revenues is 3 million, not 3.2 in 1920, and 2.8, not 3 million in 2021. Got it. All right. Right. Thanks. Okay. Eric? Ryan? Brad, what, what happened with the improvement to the audio video for the rec center? It's that is in there. That it's is, in there. Is, That's in there? There's 50,000 included, so um, the Parks and Rec Department would really like to, to utilize the, the rental of that facility. Um, so there is 50,000 to improve the audio visual. In the All right, and then, so the way I understand this, you're still including the staffing in the budget, the current positions, as well as the proposed new positions. Those are still in the budget, but at council's direction, um, we'll move forward as, as, you, as you guys wish. I recall in a previous budget, I think I saw a number closer to like 69% reserve. Um, this budget you're saying will get us to 66%? 66 with what, everything that's in it right now with that includes the filling the vacant positions the new positions all the projects that you guys that the council brought up last um, meeting um, is leaves us with a 66 percent uh, general fund operating reserve what's one percent of the reserve how much money is that one percent is roughly two hundred thousand And next year, um, I'm not seeing the projection that was in the other presentations, but next year, what is with this, what is the projection? 66% going into next year is what we think we would be at? That is, that is correct. Sorry, Michael. Sorry, Michael O'Brien, Administrative Services Manager. Just to clear up, I believe the 69% you were talking about from the previous presentation was without projects. And the last presentation was about 64%, um, including projects. So now we're basically up to 66% with the increases uh, to the revenues of the TOT. And then, I'm sorry, what was the question you just asked? So we would go into the next budget somewhere at 66% is the We thought? would start this budget at 74% and we're projected to go down to 66%. So and by the end of 2021, we'd be at 66% is what we're saying. From 74%, which is what we're projecting to end 1920 at reserve wise, and then go down to 66%, funding all the projects and, and all the operations and vacancies and everything we have included in this budget. So what's the, uh, so then for the following fiscal year, where do you see it going? It's really gonna depend on what we wanna do for projects. I know we have a long list, but what we actually include in there and with the increases to PERS and everything and police contracts and everything that comes along with, with the additional expenses, it's going to depend on how much our revenues rebound after we open everything up and then see where we're at. So right now I couldn't give you a great projection where we're going to go, but I'm assuming there would be some sort of decrease. Yeah, I mean, this is like an 8% decrease. So I guess next year, I mean, I don't, do you think that then we would also be in a negative decrease then? Is that, I mean, based off of even the last discussion we had with the structural budget deficit being bumped up two years, I mean, I'm just, I'm trying to figure out in my head here, you know, like <laughs> whether or not I want to get into $50,000 over trees or not at the moment. Yeah, I mean, if we're trying to keep up with a, a capital projects uh, schedule it makes sense and to get things done the way we feel they need to there will more than likely have to be another reduction in the 21 22 budget um, probably at the very least maybe go from 66 to 60 percent yeah I, I don't have all the numbers in front of me to, to describe all the projects and things that would be put forward next year but if we kind of follow the trend we're doing now you know i'm hoping we get those three million dollars back in revenue um, come 21 22 and hopefully that can fund a lot of the projects we're trying to do that we didn't have the money this year coming in to do. Um, 
but there's a lot to be done. So I would expect we would need to use some reserves in order to get our, our streets and our parks up to, to where we think they need to be. Yeah, I, so just for council, I mean, I'm gonna just be honest. I'm not entirely comfortable regardless of where we trim from. I mean, at the end of the day, if we just held that 8% was the reduction next year, which would be consistent with the hit this year, that means we'd be at like 58% of the reserve potentially, you know, and we're already kind of slim on the budget. I mean, understanding, although there's some staffing things in here that we've thrown back in, I mean, I'd feel more comfortable with a reserve and, you know, going into the next budget cycle somewhere around 70%. 68% perhaps, but 70 preferably, so that we're set up to be in the high 60s, I would think, next year, and give the economy time to recover. But um, I don't know, that's just my two cents. Okay, I just wanna uh, just ask the question, if, uh, we, if we're looking at the, the uh, staffing, um, the staffing segment here, uh, as I understand, the, and I, maybe I'm wrong, but somebody can fill me in. The staff, the, the, the managers, the directors, uh, feel they, they truly need these six or eight positions, vacant positions filled because of their stru structure. If we, if we did leave those positions into the budget, and we did not do anything with the proposed new positions until we looked at it maybe in September, where, the, where would that put us? And if we, uh, I see one document that says we've got $150,000 out for trees, then I see another document here that suggests that, that uh, the urban forest is $50,000. But okay, so if 150,000 is still in, and that's getting us down to the 66, how do we, if we drop that to the 50 that you're showing on uh, page 11, if we drop that down to that 50 and we go ahead and, and leave out that extra equipment for the, and we go ahead and buy the Tor Toro Dingo, say we didn't buy the Toro Dingo and we didn't uh, get the scissor lift at this point, or the removal of the scissor lift, uh, that aerator, and we looked at it back in, uh, forward in, in September, where would that put us as far as numbers? So, so to clarify, the 50,000 that you're seeing in the, the presentation is the addition that I put in there because the, the emergency budget had 100,000. In last study session, I had 100,000, so I increased it by 50. Later on in the presentation, I show the full amount that is the 150. If I'm hearing you correctly, if we didn't move forward or, or reevaluated the, the new positions in the in September, October, when we come back to look at the revenues, and we reduce the tree urban forest down to 50, um, and we took out the 100,000 that is in there for the two equipments, the, the aerator and the Toro Dingo, we would put us at about 67.5, 68% general fund reserve, um, operating reserve. So, so that means that we would leave the positions that everyone's asking for except for the two new ones. New, new ones, and we can review that again in September. Okay. Correct. Yeah, I like that number better than I like 66, I gotta tell you. Um, I had a couple other questions when you have, yeah. Go ahead, John. But, but, but don't uh, stop, I, if you, oh, never mind. What? Do you, you want me to ask the questions now, or I, I didn't no. want to interrupt you. I didn't know. If no, you were. no, you can interrupt me. Go ahead. No, no, no. I didn't mean to no, go ahead. So these are just a couple specific things, um, and I emailed these to uh, Brad a little earlier. But um, just for my knowledge, uh, and everybody's knowledge, the public and everybody, but on uh, page 19 of the, of the line item budget, fund 12, there's the uh, Foothill Boulevard medium landscape improvement. And I was wondering if, uh, just if you could remind me what that's all about. So, so this is part of the overall city median revitalization plan uh, to take the, the medians that still have dead grass and dirt 
um, to replenish them with drought tolerant landscaping. Uh, the plan was to do one major street per year until the medians were, re uh, were complete or re redone. Um, it could be delayed, but it's a project that would ultimately have to take place in the near future if we want to improve the overall look of the, the city medians. The original plan was to do one a year, and that's why it's in there. Um, so if that gives a little bit, hopefully okay. that, yeah. Okay, uh, the second question was on page 22, and it was on 22, and it was just about, the, you might have mentioned this, about the Civic Center safe canopy and lighting. And I, wait, did that have an amount in there? I can't see if it did or not. I'm trying that, to look over. That was, ac that was actually removed from the budget. Um, so that, that Civic Center stage canopy and lighting was an item that was removed um, okay. from this budget. I, it's a good idea, but maybe that can wait until next year, so that, that's fine. Um, over on page 27, it was fund 34, and that's uh, Housing Authority. And, uh, there's a line item saying Taylor House demo, and there's $175,000 in it. This year, in, in the budget this year for that. Now we already demoed the house, so is that amount to complete the building of the house? Uh, yes, this budget is to continue with design and build of the new house, and we will uh, change the, rename the account um, to remove demo in the description prior to adopting the budget. Okay, perfect, okay. And the last question, just of, uh, for information, was on age 28, and it just mentioned that Costco parking lot lease. And of course, that goes way back. And maybe you can remind me, I mean, it's got $639,000 that we're paying, um, or maybe rebating. I'm not sure what that is. But if you could explain what that is and when that actually sunsets for us, that's a big amount. This is uh, scheduled to end in 2023, and it's being paid for by the money received from ROPS in Fund 39. Money received from what? I'm sorry. The the ROPS payment from the re the, uh, the, ROPS, re the yeah. uh, redevelopment deal, the old redevelopment. Okay. okay. But 2020 is when that sun sets. Okay. okay. And, and that's a rebate to Costco, right? Excuse me? What was, what, Councilman Rabner? What was that question? Who's oh. asking? Uh, nothing. I, that's, hey, I think I'm clear on that, so no. Yeah, uh, John Smichael O'Brien, Administrative Services Manager. So basically, when the cost go in, they, they format an agreement with the former redevelopment agency to basically lease out the parking lot to the city. So this is a basically reimbursement to Costco for use of that, that lot um, for any city use. And so the agreement is structured so that they get basically a rebate from sales tax on the center. Um, that goes back towards them um, at a, a specific rate per the contract, and that agreement ends in 2023. All right, great. You know, as long as I uh, am talking, I'll just mention about the trees. So I think we should keep the trees in, and, um, you know, we, I think we're delaying the decorative lighting downtown, uh, which, is, which, which is fine. It's been delayed year after year, and that's, that's okay if we do it again and maybe bring it back later in the year or maybe it's all the way to next year where we, where we try to start that project. But um, the trees are, are you know, going to be important and it, um, it's good to plant them now. And it'll, uh, for those streets and the residents on them who want them, uh, you know, we're not forcing them down anybody's throat, but if they like them, it's going to make everything nicer for those streets that have the trees. So I, I definitely keep that that extra fifty thousand. Well, I'm not going to call it extra, but I keep the budget at the hundred fifty thousand dollars where we were trying to start out. And uh, and we left, you know we, we we tried to do a little bit of everything um, that people wanted to put back in, including the the plumber building, AV system, and everything. And you know we did we did we're doing that. That's in the budget. Um, so. Um, I think that extra fifty thousand. I, I know you're calling it. Somebody's calling it a hundred thousand. That's if we go all the way down to fifty thousand, which is basically not even a replacement budget. Um, I mean, we need to at least keep up on them. It's like the streets. We gotta keep up on it. So that's that's my opinion. 
Okay. De Dennis? I have a question. The Civic Center Park, are we doing all three sidewalks? Yes, that project was approved, uh, the right. three sidewalks, yes. And that's you, already you've, moving. You've kept it all, th for all yes. three sidewalks? Yes. And, and that's with lights and? Yes. Right. Correct. Are, are there any trees being added to that? Sherry Garwick, Public Works Director. Uh, yes, there are trees that will be planted in, in conjunction with that project. There are trees? Yes, sir. Do you know how many? I, I don't know. It was about $15,000 for trees in that. Okay, we, but we don't know how many trees that is. I, I, 12. 12? So what's the average cost of a tree? Good evening, Mayor, members of council. Um, the cost of a tree depends on the size that you purchase or that is uh, procured. So an average or a standard that we are using here in San Dimas is a 24 inch box tree. The cost for the tree itself to be planted is about $200. Okay? That's tree and planting. However, like for this not Civic Park, but for the reforestation, it comes, we are adding a one-year maintenance guarantee period on the trees so that then the contractor who plants them, they keep them alive by watering them, do formative pruning, and that's why that cost goes up because you think like, uh, like this year, $100,000 that was in the budget is getting us about 160 trees. So you do the math if they're like, 175 you think well you should get a lot more trees but that's because it comes with a one-year guarantee period so I think there are 12 trees proposed for Civic Center Park sidewalk project and I want to say that the the cost for that was was about two thousand dollars if I recall not not 12 it's two thousand the the 12 included the irrigation modifications and some of the other things that are going on with all right, Eric, you want to throw it here? At any point, have we considered like a private-public partnership when it comes to uh, supplementing your reforest, uh, reforestation uh, budget? So that that program currently is in existence here in, in San Dimas. It, it's actually a, a program that was um, developed maybe 15 years ago, called called uh, Branch hands and um, there is a a nonprofit status um, I think that's something like that that's set up so so in the past people did donate and it, I think it was done more um, it has not been very uh, it hasn't been promoted very much um, not since I've, I've been here um, but it is something that we are definitely interested in doing so and had it not been for the COVID um, you know, the suspension of the Arbor Day um, event that we had scheduled, we were actually going to be uh, bringing that information out, uh, letting people know that they could donate to the trees. So potentially, if we were to revive that program, any reductions in that urban forest reforestation budget um, going forward could potentially be offset by that uh, partnership, depending on how we promoted it. Yes, and, and depending on, you know, uh, just the, the public, you know, you know, donating funds to, towards it. Uh, as more people are learning about the, uh, the urban forest here, and um, currently we are planting trees. So right now in, in, in the town core area, there are trees being planted. Um, we are hearing both sides very polarized. Some people say, absolutely not, I don't want a tree because it drops leaves. And others are very welcoming to say this is this is great, you know, to get a tree. So there are mixed feelings about that, um, but we we believe we can. Although, like, it it wouldn't really be a, a mechanism to say that at one place we'll replace any kind of funding from the general fund. Thank you. Let me ask you a little bit about that that program. So, if you came up with a cost of of a tree, then you put it out there. 
to the community, okay? And say, say I bought a tree, okay? So I'd be able to tell my grandkids or, you know, hey, that tree we planted and they could watch it grow. You know, I don't know if you put a little name plaque out there or, or what, what you do, you know, I don't know if you name a tree, I have no idea. But under today's conditions and what we're doing, I'm not so sure that I don't think that we should just dust that off and start to look at it and start pushing it and, and, and supporting it. Because we've got to cut the budget somewhere. Now I'm willing to cut it and then look at it again in September when we come back in here and uh, look at it, but in the same time, have Parks and Rec dust off that program and start looking at it. Uh, because it is marketing. And you're right, there are a lot of people who out there who would have no problem, you know, supporting a tree. I gotta tell you, I would. I would have no problem supporting a tree somewhere. And I know there are a lot of people out there who do it. But I also get lots of phone calls saying, we need to support this tree issue. And then I get other people who says, how many more trees do you need? So, you know, and, and I know that you guys have done an audit and how many trees we had and how many trees we're losing and, and stuff that, and I'm, I'm very, very sensitive to that issue. But I'm also very sensitive to, you would like to see a Toro Dingo, okay? And some other people would like to see this. You know, somebody wants to see, you know, audio visual equipment or sound equipment in, in, the, in the plumber, plumber building. So where do you do it? Do you say, we're not gonna do the plumber building or what you told me already at one point or somebody has told me that there's potential if we put in this new sound equipment, we may be able to rent it more often, which would be a revenue generating factor. So that's where, where I'm at. You know, we can all want, but we all need to, to work hard. You know, public works wants, you know, planning wants, admin wants, parks and rec wants. So what I was hoping is at some point that we would come together knowing that the council really would want it as close to 70 as possible, or at least a few members of the council, okay? And, and if it couldn't get there, let's look at where we, how we could get there. And if we can't, then you know, just say, hey, you guys are idiots, and, and uh, the, the reality is we can't get there. But, but it sounds like we can get there if we're just a little patient. Okay, and, and look at some of these things, push them down, you know, September or, or, or so. Then we'll have a much, much better idea. Like within the last couple of days, TOT went up $300,000. So we're guessing at numbers. And, and poor Mike, every time he gets, a, you know, talks to me, he, he's got numbers running all over his head. But all of a sudden, we got $300,000 more than we thought we were going to have. So, I mean, I think that's. Some of this stuff we can look back and, and look to the future for, and we hope that we're, we're there. That's just my opinion. Sure, no, and, and if, I, if I may, I, this isn't like um, what, what Hector wants. It, it really is based on what we believe are the needs mm -hmm. for the community. And do, do keep in mind, it's council pleasure. You know, we sure. are presenting, it is my job to present what I believe the uh, Parks and Recreation Department um, requires in order to serve the community at the best that we can. And, you know, by looking at those cuts that have been made by all departments, um, this is what we are calling the emergency budget, right? Because we, the original proposed budget was much higher. So those cuts of all, you know, were done, I guess, trying to get it close to high 60s as we could, but it, it, again, it's not about what Hector, you know, wants or what anybody wants. I think it's what we feel is required. Or needed. Appreciate it. Thank you there, Hector. But I, I will tell you, when I left the, the last meeting, the last emergency budget meeting, uh, I was pretty locked into throwing a hard freeze on all, all, all of uh, hirings, okay? That would get me to a point that, that uh, I'm comfortable with. But having had conversation with the city manager and uh, others. Uh, I'm willing to. I'm willing to talk about the vacant positions because people are telling me they need them. Okay, I'm not so willing to talk about the new, the new positions until September, and 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 I'm not sure, myself, if if the, you know, all of those positions are really needed. But I'm listening to 
more than willing to hear somebody tell me, you know, why they couldn't do this, and, you know, and so. Uh, hey, Emmett. Yes, John. I was just wondering, what, so what number are you talking about for the urban reforestation line item? Well, I, I, I could get to 50,000, John, if we could, you know, and we start looking at a joint partnership that Eric was talking about. That's, that's the first time I've heard about it. Um, it, it must have been around when you, you were around. You've been here for 100 years. So um, it, it sounds like I, I'm surprised that you didn't bring that up. Uh, but I, I think it's a, not, not a bad idea. If there's a program there, and we, all we have to do is pull it out and dust it off and start talking to people, um, we, we may be able to get the trees that we believe we need this year. But we have an opportunity after that in September to, to uh, help it along. So. Well, I was going to say that, uh, for one thing, the, uh, in the budget, unless you're proposing to cut this too, um, the AV equipment for the plumber building, I believe, is in the budget. Yes, it is. At. Yes, it is. So, so I'm not sure if you're planning, if you're proposing to cut that as well. Um, and because, and the other thing you mentioned about that, which is valid. So first of all, I don't want to cut that part. Um, and because it's exactly what you said, a better sound system, we're just making a better venue. It might raise a little more revenue. I, I don't know about that, but but you gotta. So my uh, my last pitch on the trees, at, for for now anyway, is that you know a while back um, he under Hector's uh, direction, we did an evaluation. I don't know what it was called, but uh, an evaluation of what a tree actually is worth, because trees are worth money to the community, and, and there's actually a dollar amount, that, and, it, and it's hard to kind of see that because. You figure, well, if I cut it down, who's going to pay me, you know, three thousand dollars for it? But these trees that cost us whatever Hector said, two hundred dollars or three hundred dollars with, with the years of watering, all that kind of stuff. In a few years, 10, 20 years, those guys will be worth a thousand dollars, two thousand, and three thousand dollars for the thing that they do, kind of just just doing their own thing. So it, it's it's an investment, and it's a pretty you know easy investment to make. You don't really have to do that much to it, and um, I don't know. So that's that's my last pitch. That you know, I I, I can compromise at a hundred thousand dollars, but going down to fifty at this point, I mean, I, I would I would put it put it back at the, back to you the same way you just were talking. That if we did a hundred thousand now, and we found out we were in trouble in September, then we could cut the budget at that point and, and just say, Hector, you got all the trees you're going to get, that kind of thing. But but I I think we do. We need more than 50, that's for sure. Well, John, I, th I think cutting it to uh, <clears throat> 50 is too much, but I could see cutting it to 100,000 and coming back looking at it in September, which makes a lot of sense because things are certainly going to change a lot between now and then. Well, I, I can get to the 100,000, but I won't. I, I will not vote for the Toro Dingo and the uh, aerator. That, that gives me that money to go there. If that's what you guys want to do with trees, I'll vote in favor of that of the trees. But th those two pieces of equipment, uh, and then we can talk about it in in September. But that gets us to a point where I could have compromise. But yeah, I'm not. Uh, to me, I'd rather see the uh, dingo, and I'd rather see the tools that our staff need to do the job for the community. I understand the tree argument, but a tree's a uh, uh, a want versus a need and I think uh, our staff have to have it and as a matter of fact you know looking at the staffing included in the budget you know I, I have a hard time with this because I've asked for performance metrics from this city since I've been elected and so when you're asking me to vote during a time of fiscal emergency for the city on positions and I'm not able to see performance metrics behind any of these departments then I have a hard time saying, well, when I see the word assistant, it's an assistant, which means I, without seeing anything tangibly uh, evidence-based that says this is what's coming out of here, this is the time it's taking, it's very difficult to support this. And so when I look at your staffing proposal, if you hold that the numbers are true, that $200,000 is 1%, then that means if we froze all of these staffing positions, 663000 then we'd get up to 69% in the reserve. And, you know, I, I'm okay with that. And I'm having a hard time saying, you know, anything other than that because COVID-19 proved one thing. 
that City Hall can be closed and I have no metrics behind any of the work that was done and have no clue on how that worked. We're just opening the doors again. And so, you know, I asked Ken at one point for a list of all the positions that were telecommuting to be able to look at that and see what the productivity was from all of those positions. What got done? What didn't get done? What could we change knowing we were going to have some fiscal emergency ahead? So when you talk about talking about uh, finance and recovery following all of this, one thing that was learned from COVID-19 that continues to be learned as it evolves is that maybe there's some positions that are non-essential. I mean, that's, that's the bottom line. And, you know, so when I'm looking at positions that are frozen at the moment or may be frozen or may not be frozen, whatever council decides, it's hard to say tangibly that those are there. I'm glad Emmett had a conversation with staff and got some justification. It'd be nice for all of council maybe to have a better understanding about those positions. Um, but here we are. And so, um, you know, to be perfectly honest with you, um, I'm supportive of uh, 50,000 for the trees. I'd rather see staff have the tools that they need. Um, and I'm almost inclined to just have staff go back and figure out how to get us to some number between 68 and 70 percent that council would feel comfortable with um, how, whatever that looks like if it looks like a hundred thousand dollars to the to the trees and you can figure it out elsewhere I, I'd, I'd be okay with that um, but i just think to dip into anything less than 68 percent knowing where we're going um, is tough to swallow and i don't think it's fiscally prudent when you when you look at the uh, staffing positions, you know, there's what, two, four, six, seven of current vacancies, okay? Is there, uh, is there any of those positions that we absolutely must have? Uh, you know, and I realize they're vacant, and I think a couple of them have only been vacant like a month or two months or something like that, right before COVID-19, uh, either retirements or, or whatever. Is there any of those positions that are absolutely necessity to run our show? The answer to that is, is yes, or we wouldn't have him in there. And I can have the department heads come up and talk about each position and what the need is for, if, if that would be helpful for the council. Okay, well, I'll tell you, before I can get to anything over $50,000 for trees, there's got to be some kind of cut. So that's just, just the if it's a, a, a about it. So somebody is willing to give up something else to get more money for trees, you know, I, I think you have a, a, I think there's a, an alternative to that. And uh, I'm glad Eric brought it up because I got to tell you, I never thought of anything about a, 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 a city partnership with the community. I think that there's a lot of people out there who, who would more than happily jump in and, and get a tree and name it off of them, you know, after themselves. If you go up to San Dimas Golf Course, you'll find lots of trees that are named for uh, golfers and, and things like that that uh, was a good idea. I think that's something that uh, I, I thank Eric for bringing it up. And, I, and I, I also thank Hector, you know, for saying, hey, there is a plan that we just need to look at, okay? I don't think he's overly supportive about it, but I think it's something that he, would, he would, wouldn't mind looking at because it just all of a sudden came out here. So uh, that, that's where I'm at. John, you got something, I, I, hear, you, I hear your microphone moving. Uh, but, yeah, I'm, just, I'm just turning a page to try to get to the right uh, page, but uh, yeah, the architect uh, looked like from that one page of the slide, and I, I don't know if I'm not looking at the updated one, but it looks like park rent uh, reduced their rent by 1.2 million over what they would have liked. So, it, as you recall, that the, the, the ideal budget had a lot of other stuff in it, and there's some, some things missing, and we mentioned a couple of those. For example, you know, those, those old-fashioned lights downtown. I, I know with Krishna and now Sherry, we've been waiting and waiting and waiting on that. I, I don't know when the last time we actually installed any, what any of those is, but that's a 330 $5,000 reduction in the budget that is, is not in there. It, it would be in there. It would be in there. But so talking about a trade-off, sure, there, there's a trade-off. 
that the shelter or the shade canopy over the state at Civic Center Park would be fantastic. Um, and yet I think that's out of the budget as well. So, so there's a lot of things out of the budget. And, and I'm in favor of, of keeping those, like the bingo and the uh, walk behind uh, aerator in the budget as proposed in, in tonight's line item budget. And that gets us to the, uh, you know, whatever it was, the 67% reserves. And um, as Dennis and I were saying, if we cut that 50,000 from the 150, that, that's a real reduction. It's another, you know, it's another quarter percent. But, you know, it, it gets us to more where, because I love having reserves, believe me. This, and a really crucial, or not crucial, that's not the right word, a excruciating year uh, for us. And, and this is the kind of year to dip into the, budget, the, 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 uh, the, the reserves a little bit. But, you know, that's, it, it all goes with, you know, everybody's given and taken a little bit. So that's all I have to say. And, um, you know, that's it. I, I don't think there's any doubt, John, that we're going to dip into the reserves. I think that this council also has to be uh, very aware that what we do today is going to affect us tomorrow, meaning next year's budget or, or whatever. There's, if we drop down to below some number that's not palatable, we, 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 we could have problems. And I think that we, as the, the governing body here, have to be aware of that. So, I mean, I, I'm okay if we can get to 67, 68%. But uh, the reality is, uh, it, it looks like to me that we're going to have to have a, uh, another meeting, a special meeting again, because I don't think we're going to walk out of here very comfortable. And, and, and that's it. And, and, and John, I, I got I to gotta be really honest with you. I think, I think I'm picking up about every other word you're saying. So I just want you to understand, if I'm right here, I don't know what the television is putting up out there. So uh, as you talk, there's a lot of, a lot of muffling and, and, and stuff like that. So uh, help me if I've missed something. Yeah, I'll, I'll be at the 7 o'clock meeting uh, in person. And uh, you know, I, if, uh, I was going to actually ask you, Emmett, if I could make a comment when we, uh, when, we, when we call the meeting to order just about me being back, uh, because it has been a, been a little bit of a tough decision. But, um, th but let, let me just, I'll just throw in my advice for the council, and that's that you can't agree on everything. So if there's three people who want one thing and two people who want another on a certain issue like the trees, then we don't need another special meeting. Just get these things done and let's get the budget on its way. We've got we've to adopt it in two weeks, so let's, let's just do it. So on the trees, I'm saying 150. I could go to 100. Dennis was saying 100. I think it's three that'll say 50. So let's tell staff to put 50 in the budget. It's not what I prefer, but that's, let's just, you know, take the bull by the horns and go. Well, I don't, I, and I appreciate that, John, but I, I don't even, that's not even enough. I mean, that's the truth of the matter is, I mean, the bottom line is 50,000, 100,000 is just a drop in the bucket when it comes to what I think overall has to be done. And for, for uh, Brad, on this, on this thing, like the full-time uh, from part-time position, you have on here, like the PIO position, 36,000. Is, is that a reflection? That's the increase Correct. over what is currently there. Correct. So when you're showing these numbers, does this include the, to I mean, this is the total cost for these positions or is this just the increased cost? Because like, for example, like salary and benefits, does that include the pension liability? That includes total package or is this just the draw right now so those those numbers that are being reflected on that page are salary and benefits so the cost for them so in instance for the full-time to part-time PIO she's basically at half benefits because that person already is PERS but at a part-time rate so when you add the additional hours add the additional cafeteria the additional PERS for that additional hours and all that it equates to about thirty six thousand dollars more than what she currently gets as a part-time PIO. This is the f fully burdened budget, so it includes the salary and benefits. And, and all those costs. are reflected in the budget with the increases and everything. That's everything in there. So that's just basically showing if we went back down from a full-time, which is presented in this budget, to a part-time, 
would, where she currently is, it would reduce the budget by about $36,000. So in the next, so next year's budget, so over the next tw two budgets, basically, this is gonna be a million dollar item in total. I mean, over a million dollars, right? I mean, 600 th something thousand this year, probably be, you know, with whatever the CPI increases that comes up, I would assume, um, if yeah. that happens. I mean, if you're, there would be r roughly four additional steps probably for each of these positions, assuming they start out at the first step, which each step I believe is 5% increases. So are those um, and steps? And then any CPI on top of that, yeah. So there, okay. there would definitely be increases above what these numbers are today. Okay, so then this is just the increase if we were to do it effective this budget, but this is not reflective then of the step increases and CPI that would be forthcoming. If there are any CPI increase in the future, th that's not reflecting this number. This is just what a, the fully burdened cost at a step A starting July 1 till June 30 of next year, what the cost would be. Okay, so um, the step thing though, so this does not reflect these numbers then, like let's say it was a five step position or step, you know, fifth step, this isn't the total ask for a funded position to get it to that fifth step. This is the entry level step, correct? Yeah, we, we budget as the person is expected to go to or is at this point. So when we do our assumptions for the salary costs in a given year, I look at if there's gonna be a longevity that takes effect during the year, if there is a merit increase or step increase during the year, I factor that in at the point that they would get it per their, you know, when their hire date is and when their evaluation dates were. So that all gets into this budget, but doesn't, it doesn't inflate it by saying this is a step five. It's what they would really cost for the year. Right, okay, all right. So do we do all of our positions like that? Yes, all our it? positions are budgeted that way. Okay, so we don't, we don't budget it out at its max potential. No, we do not. Okay. All right, thank you. Can I just throw in uh, about the, I guess going back to the tree thing, kind of. Um, the line item for the foothill uh, median improvements, um, I don't know that that has come up for discussion. I kind of, in my own estimation, view that and the urban forest reforestation kind of on the same level of importance. Um, when we're talking, like, uh, to your point, um, whether we're getting equipment for our staff to do their jobs more efficiently or better, um, or something that is nice to look at or potentially, you know, has some sort of aesthetic value, um, I think uh, the equipment or um, the infrastructure that would uh, benefit the community more directly, something that they're going to use would be better. Um, what slide are you looking at? So that would be um, slide 13. 13. It's uh, right under the urban forest reforestation and it's the Foothill Boulevard median landscape improvements. So if the, um, you know, we're talking $400,000, which would be 2%, um, it, which is a significant chunk, I think that would get us pretty close. Um, with everything else included on it, that would get us to 68%, which is a pretty big bump. Um, and maybe that's something to be considered um, in September. Um, if, if we're, what, what I'm getting at here is um, if we're putting trees over the landscape improvements, I'm okay with that. Um, but, you know, I kind of view those on the same level. Nobody's going out on the medians to recreate. Um, it's kind of just uh, a nice thing to have, to have a little more beautification on the, uh, on the medians. Yeah, but I do think, and I, if I recall this, this gets us to more drought tolerant landscaping. And I think there's an expense that we're still incurring, is that right, from the existing medians, the way they're constructed with watering and everything else? Well, right now in those medians where it's just barren, the only okay. thing that's really getting watered is the trees. So once we fully landscape them, even with drought tolerant, there would still be probably some an additional more. water because we're actually watering those plants as opposed to not watering the dirt areas. Oh. Right. If you took out the foothill medium, it would be raising two points. Yeah, yeah, percent. Yeah, it's a pretty big chunk. And I, I guess what I'm getting at is dirt is pretty drought tolerant. So <laughs> true. Yeah. Well, I can tell you. Uh, I mean, that's something to definitely look at. I don't, you know. Well, I agree I'm, with I'm, Eric. I'm willing. The, the, I'm willing the to look at that. Machinery may be very important for the staff to do its work to the fullest extent. Uh, I'm not sure. It's, Mayor City Council, if, if that is something that the council 
is, is willing to look at to push that off a year or reevaluate in September, we could reach the, the a level of reserves that it sounds like everybody would be comfortable with at 68 to 69 percent if we eliminated the or reevaluated the new positions in, in September, we reduced the tree and kept it at 100,000 instead of 150. Um, and we still uh, roughly the Toro Dingo on the equipment, um, we could get to the 68, 69%. If we kept the Toro Dingo, the equipment that's in there, 100,000 for the trees, and reevaluated the part, the new positions, not the vacant positions, in September, we would be about um, 68, 68. So we, we would, we would fill the current vacancies. That would include filling the current vacancies. Okay, so the only pro only cut there would be the proposed new positions. Correct. And we'd leave you with a 60, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, wrong, Michael, but a 68 69% general fund reserve. I mean, roughly, if we're just talking about taking out the new positions, which is 122,000, that would get us close to 67. You take out the 50,000 to get us down to 100,000 for trees, and then you do the 400,000 for the medians, I'm pretty comfortable that would get us really close to 69%. Okay, would that still give us, I'm sorry, I missed something there. But that would still give us uh, the equipment that, that Parks and Rec need, the Toro and- uh, Yeah, that would, that would have those, all that equipment that we have in there. I could even do small reductions, a couple of other areas to make sure we get the 69. Um, I mean, we have the, the, the additional network security for 25. The downtown sidewalk, the 5,000, we're doing in-house. That was just kind of a make sure we have enough to, to get a, additional equipment or whatever we may need. But I think we could comfortably keep that with sidewalks maintained, take that out. I think we could really get close to 69, even close to 70. 69, I think for sure we can get to with those cuts and keep all that equipment. Okay, thank you. The, the network security thing to me is, is a super priority. Um, I, I, yeah, I mean, seeing what's happening in other cities, anything we can do to try to shore that up, yeah. I would uh, keep. At least that stays in the budget, right? That is, I was just, that's just something I was, is a bigger number, because operating expenses kind of have a, a double effect on our reserve, right? Because mm -hmm. you're lowering the thing we need to cover and raising our, our reserve level. So it kind of has a double effect when you reduce an operating as opposed to a project expense. So that's just something I, I pulled out of the hat to, to see what we could do. But I mean, it's not going to make the biggest difference in the world, 25,000. So yeah, we can definitely keep that in. But between the foothill, the trees, and the new positions, we're at least at 68, probably, probably close to 69. So it depends on what your real comfort level is. Thank you. Thank you. I, I just want to, uh, I know that continuous improvement training is a hot button item. Could you just explain to me what you're, th what you're thinking about what continuous improvement training is? And I, I, I really need to, this is an item that I believe was about an audit, audit that was gonna be done. Um, and this is prior, prior to when I was here, but an audit on efficiencies in different departments was what this was set aside for uh, in the original budget. In the last study session, it was kind of mentioned that this would be used for continuous improvement of staff. Um, at council's direction, I will utilize that money however you, um, the council sees fit. And um, that, yeah, that's what that money's there for. I believe that a year ago or two years ago, uh, there was a discussion of forty thousand dollars for that. How, how do we get it? How do we? If it's going to cost us forty, then how do we get it to twenty-five now? I don't know. Sorry, my Sorry, idea. If I could quickly enter. Part of why they believe that was at forty thousand is because a group of staff members, including the city manager at the time, went to a Kaizen training to try to understand how to this would all work as far as trying to find better efficiencies and. They kind of saw a presentation on how, what they would do if they came in here and, and kind of evaluated our processes. So part of that was that trip was in Arizona. So it housed staff and the people that went for about a week. So I think that was where the additional 15 or so thousand dollars came from was for them to take that training. Of course, most of those people now have retired, but, <laughs> but yeah, so the 25, would, well, I think the idea of the 25 was that was about the amount to hopefully get a consultant and actually do some of that work. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm a not little, sure exactly what that would cost as we haven't done an RFP for it, but that was the placeholder anyway. I'm slightly disappointed to hear that some staff thought it was a complete waste of time, which is um, unfortunate and that it never got passed on, which means it was a complete waste of money. 
Um, so I'm hoping maybe we'll get it right this time. That would be the plan. So, all right, John, you got anything else? Good morning, no, John. It's a good way forward. What did, I'm, I'm sorry, I didn't hear what he said. I, I believe he said it sounds good moving forward. Is that is that okay? Good way forward. Okay. Um, I will just say, and, and I have really no problem with the the foothill medium, you know, landscape understanding that we're water watering the trees and stuff. But I do want to say that we're right now in a currently doing landscape improvements on Arrow Highway, and I cannot tell you how many calls I've received from people telling me about time businesses along there said this has been a long time coming so people are notice these landscape improvements that we're doing and it's it, it is a, an issue but you know what if we looked at it later and we knew we were going to look at it later uh, I could I could get I could get past that I didn't never I honestly I didn't think anybody on this council could get past the you know I thought they were pretty locked into the foothill media and things but so when I'm hearing there's some there's some there's some uh, interest in it and so I, I'm perfectly fine with it if we want to scratch that and, and uh, give us that two extra points and and, uh, and look at some other things and, and I still have some concerns about the current vacancy but I also believe that the staff you know uh, I have to kind of like take their opinion on what they really need but uh, I would really like to see what what we could look at more in September if, if if that's at all possible and I realize that the directors wouldn't come and say I need this spot but as Ryan said earlier we we were closed down for three months and uh, uh, you know there is no and guys we know they did their jobs because you guys never complained about it so I, I know our staff is loyal and uh, hard-working but you know there's there's some interest here uh, I'd like to see see some of those positions held off but on the other hand it, I could be convinced easily uh, as long as we don't go to the proposed new positions okay and I know our PIO is working and maybe she could work you know if she was here for another 10 hours or so maybe we could get more but the reality is right now we've got to cut some place and that might be the place and and we tell her or tell whoever's the recreation coordinator that we'll truly look at it in September and see where we stand. Like I said, yesterday we didn't have, or two days ago, we didn't have $300,000 additional in TOT. So tomorrow, who knows what's going to happen. We, we can guess, but uh, we're a pretty uh, resilient community, and uh, I think most people want to see all, all the things that are doing, the continuous improvement. You know, there are a lot of people out there, like John said, that looks at trees, okay? There's a lot of people who don't look at trees. The reality is we're trying to do the right thing as best we can do with the money we have allotted to us. So, anybody else? I'll just say, you know, the Foothill Median, uh, I do think it needs to be done just because I'm not voicing it. I think it can be pushed out a budget, um, but I do think that needs to be done. And I think people uh, both in Via Verde, when we did that, were happy and I have heard the same. And I know there's people waiting for that project to be done. And, you know, Mayor, I just point out that um, these positions weren't funded, so it's not a cut. We never, it never was a full-time position. So, you know, I, the idea that we're cutting some of that, this is a proposal, you know, so I just want to be clear. Wh for which the position you're talking about? Well, the, like the, the PIO, PIO, for example. Or what about or these other... Uh, no, I understand the current vacant yeah. positions could be cuts potentially, yeah. but the proposed new positions, those are not. Not. Yeah. Those are... That's 122,636. Right. Yeah, you know, I, I just hope that, you know, the exercise of this budget, if the intention is or if, if council's inclination is, you know, we're going to evaluate in September, um, you know, reevaluate based off of the revenues that we've seen. Um, I'm comfortable with that. But I think we have to be mindful that whatever we adopt here, we should be full well committed to for this fiscal year. 
just means in September when we check in, if it happens to be like, oh, hey, look, you know, or it could be worse. I mean, I, I'm, I'm inclined to believe, based off of what we're seeing right now with people going out, I think people aren't going to wait to go to dinner again. People are, I think people are pretty much, this may recover sooner, hopefully, God willing, sooner than we all anticipate. But if it does not, I just think we need to be prepared to lock into this for 12 months and then evaluate uh, for the next budget. And I hope in the next budget exercise, we're starting earlier with council meetings regarding this so we can get this figured out and not have to go through this in such a hasty manner. So, so Brad, could you kind of uh, just refresh us on what your feelings are, not your feelings, but what your understanding is what this council is saying and, and certain, you know, the numbers of the doing away with Foothill, doing, adding this and taking this off, adding more money here, adding less money here, or you know, yes, just yeah. an idea. So we know that you understand uh, what we're thinking. Yes, Mayor and City Council, if, if I'm hearing you correctly, we are, will bring back a final uh, budget to be adopted that does not have any new positions in it. It has $100,000 for the urban forest. It includes the, the two equipment pieces of equipment for Parks and Rec. And it does not have, it removes the foothill median 400000 which roughly should give a general fund reserve balance of at least 68, probably closer to 69%. Um, if, 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 if that's the wishes of the council, then I will uh, move forward with bringing that I, back. I, I think he has it pretty well. Yeah. Uh, should we remember that we're not doing away completely with the foothill medium? We're <laughs> suspending it temporarily and we're right. going to relook yeah. at it. At Absolutely. In, I, I, in the I September. agree that, it's, that we don't want to. People are very receptive. That's what they see, that's what they judge. Right. They judge our, our city by all the activities we have, but they're, they're very, very minded about our streets and our medians, and uh, there is a tremendous difference uh, uh, in the Via Verde. Uh, Foothill needs to look at. I know that we have a Lone Hill thing that we you know, still have out there, um, but the reality is, like I said, people are calling, even as of today, talking about the Aero Highway project that we got going on. So that, that's what people are looking at, you know, their, in their community. So I'm, I'm pretty comfortable with where we're at. Um, you know, if you find something else that you think we can cut or add in to it, you know, to get to where we need to be, that's fine. But I could live, I could live very comfortable with 68 plus 69 uh, myself. That's just for me saying. Thank you, thank you, Mayor. Council for your direction. Anybody else have any more, any more conversation? Okay, I would, uh, the only thing at the end of this thing is, uh, Hector, if you would mind, please dust off that paperwork that, that I don't think anybody knew but you <laughs> about the uh, partnership. And I, I appreciate you and Eric talking about it or whatever, that sounds, just something to look at. That might, you know, you may be able, you may be able to get to John's $150,000, you know, another 50,000 and people wanting to put in trees. So it's, it's something, okay? Any, <laughs> any, any further? Okay, John, you still okay? I will uh, see you guys in half an hour or so. You didn't fall off your chair? <laughs> yeah, almost. All right, John. All right, anybody have any, any further to say? Hey, well, let's see what, I don't even know what time it is, guys. It's, it's time to adjourn. I'll see you at uh, <laughs> 7 o'clock. Okay. <laughs>